Come on now, I want to try this one more time. It is 7.59. And God has been too good to us to just give a haphazard praise. Come on, let's give him the fruit of our lips saying hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we're celebrating 100 weeks in service. And in addition to this grand celebration, how many of you all are glad that he got up on the third day with all power in his hand? Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. I'm just glad to be in the house of God one more time. I honor the spirit of Christ on this morning. We thank God for Jesus Christ. We honor our leader on this morning. Hallelujah. We thank God for the first lady of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. We honor her. We honor our first assistant, Elder John Amanchuku, on this morning. We thank God for Supervisor Beverly DeJanae. Come on, let's thank God for her. We thank God for her. District Missionary Mose, we thank God for her. Let's thank God for Superintendent Parker being with us here on this morning. For all the elders and ministers, the evangelists and missionaries. Let's thank God for our mothers on this morning, the heroines. Amen. And we honor Mother Turner on this morning, that awesome woman of God, and we're yet believing. At this time, we're going to move forward in our service. We're going to have prayer by Elder Corey McNeil. The scripture will be done by Evangelist Wanda Thomas. Then we will have our musical selection, and then the purpose by Evangelist Patricia Lester. Please receive them in that order. My soul loves Jesus. My, my soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. My soul loves Jesus. My, my soul really loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Help me bless, bless his name. Let the church say yes, 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 Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for this day. Thou art worthy to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and they were created. God, we come today to say thank you. We're thankful, God. We're grateful for what you have done, oh God, for you've allowed us to see these 100 weeks, oh God. Your word declared unto us, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. God, you showed yourself strong, allowing us to recognize that we are, oh God, your possession. God, your word declares in Psalm 139 and 16 that every day of our life was laid out before a single day had passed. God, you showed yourself strong in bringing us through these 100 weeks. And because you live, Jesus, we were able to face every today. Because you live, Jesus, we were able to face every tomorrow. And we give you glory. We give you glory. 
We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Hallelujah. God, we thank you that during these 100 weeks, God, you gave us a man of God, a true spiritual leader who pointed us back to you, Jesus, to let us know that worship was worth the risk, who let us know to seek your face, who let us know to worship God, who let us know to stand on God's truth. And God, we ask right now that you will continue to anoint him, God, strengthen them one more time to preach and declare your word on today with power and authority. And God, we put our hands together and we give you praise we give you glory hallelujah in jesus name amen good morning our scripture text will be coming from mark 16 verses 3 through 6 and when they said among themselves who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulchre and then they looked they saw that this stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And they said unto them, Be not affrighted. Yes, ye see Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. Behold the place where they laid him. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Glory, glory. But aren't you glad to be celebrating 100 weeks back in live services? We're getting ready to go in, but it's a, a quick testimony. A co-worker of mine, a brother in the Lord, he asked me a few weeks ago, he said, you guys back in service? I said, man, we've been back at, at that point almost 90 weeks. They were still having Zoom services. But I thank God that he's kept us and he's blessed us for 100 weeks. We're almost in two years. Come on, somebody put those hands together. A fitting song that our bishop wrote some time ago simply says, We come to worship you. We come to give you the praise. We come to worship you. We come to lift up your name. You're everything, everything to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're everything, everything to me. Help me say we come to worship you.
but I'm so thankful that he is. Y'all ready to take it off? Send your everything. All I need, Lord. You're all I need, Lord. You're my salvation, yes, you are. You're my deliverer, yes, you are. You're my redeemer, Lord, yes, you are. The propitiation of my sins. All that I need, I find in you. All that I need, I find in you. Alcohol can't do it. Drugs can't do it. But you satisfy all my need. You satisfy all my need. More than my wife, Lord. More than my son, Lord. More than my grandbabies. For you are every, every, everything. All that I need, Lord. All that I need, Lord. That's why we celebrate you, Lord. Because you've been so good. 100 weeks, Lord. You've been a keeper and a healer. Some of us even got sick, Lord. But you still healed our bodies. And 100 weeks later, we come to give you all the glory. We come to give you all the praise. We come to give you all the worship. Nobody deserves it but you, Lord. We make our boast in you, Lord. We make our boast in you, Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody, anybody, everybody give the Lord praise. live and Facebook live today I stand before you to declare the purpose for this grand celebration it can be found in your programs state of North Carolina Roy Cooper governor March 27 2020 executive order number 121 stay-at-home order and strategic strategic directions for North Carolina in response to increasing COVID-19 cases. Whereas on March 10, 2020, the undersigned issued executive order number 116, which declared a state of emergency to coordinate the state's response and protective actions to address the coronavirus disease 2019 public health emergency and to provide for the health, safety, and welfare of residents and visitors located in North Carolina. Whereas on March 27, 2020, the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services has documented 763 cases of COVID-19 across 60 counties and has identified the occurrence of widespread communication transmission of the virus. And whereas hospital administrators and healthcare providers have expressed concerns that unless the spread of COVID-19 is limited, existing healthcare facilities may be insufficient to care for those who become sick. 
And whereas such limitations on person-to-person -person contact are reasonably necessary to address the public health risks posed by COVID-19, and now, therefore, by the authority vested in me as governor by the Constitution and the laws of, state, of the state of North Carolina, it is ordered. Section one, stay at home. Stay at home or place of residence. All individuals in the state of North Carolina are ordered to stay at home, their place of residence or current place of abode, except as allowed in this executive order. They must at all times and must as much as reasonably possible maintain social distancing of at least six feet from another person with the exception of family or household members consistent with the social distancing requirements set forth in this executive order. All persons may leave their home or places of residence only for essential activities, essential government, governmental operations, or to participate in or access COVID-19 essential businesses and operations, all as defined below. Section three, leaving the home and travel for essential activities is permitted. For purpose of this executive order, individuals may leave their residence only to perform any of the following essential activities. Section three, six, is place of worship. Travel to and from a place of worship. Section two, COVID-19 essential businesses and operations. In order to slow the spread of COVID-19, it is necessary to reduce the instances where individuals interact with one another in a manner inconsistent with social distancing requirements set forth below. Many of those interactions occur at work. At the same time, it is necessary that certain businesses essential to the response of COVID-19 to the infrastructure of the state and nation and to the day-to-day -day life of North Carolinians remain open. In light of the above considerations, non-essential businesses and operations must cease. For purposes of this executive order, a COVID-19 essential business and operation includes the following businesses, not-for-profit organizations and educational institutions. Businesses that meet social distancing requirements, businesses, not-for-profit organizations, or educational institutions that conduct operations while maintaining social distancing requirements. Number seven, stores that sell groceries and medicine. Number 10, religious entities. Religious facilities, entities, groups, gatherings, including funerals, also services, counseling, pastoral care, and other activities provided by the religious organizations to the members of their faith community. All of these functions are subject to limitations on events or convenings in section three of the executive order. Number 30, additional COVID-19 essential retail businesses, additional COVID-19 essential retail businesses are, and what is included is beer, wine, and liquor stores. Section three, mass gatherings. For the reason and pursuant to the authority set forth above, a mass gathering is defined as any event or convening that brings together more than 10 persons in a single room or single space at the time, such as auditorium, stadium, arena, large conference room, meeting hall, or any other confined indoor or outdoor space. A mass gathering does not include normal operations at airports, bus and train stations, medical facilities, libraries, shopping malls, and centers. It also does not include any COVID-19 essential business or operations as defined in this executive order. Section six, enforcement. The provisions of this executive order shall be enforced by state and local law enforcement officers. A violation of this executive order may be subject to prosecution and is punishable as a class two misdemeanor. Section seven, effective date. 
This executive order is effective Monday, March 30th, 2020 at 5 p.m. and shall remain in effect for 30 days from the date or unless repealed, replaced, or rescinded by another applicable executive order. An executive order rescinding the declaration of the state of emergency will automatically rescind this executive order. In witness whereof, I have hereunto signed my name and affixed the great seal of the state of North Carolina at the Capitol in the city of Raleigh this 27th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2020. Roy Cooper, Governor. I want to know, are there any essential, saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled saints in the house on this morning? Hallelujah. Indeed, we are essential. Help me thank God for our leader and this man of God that saw fit that he refused to back down. Come on, help me. This is the type of leadership we have that this man of God realized that indeed worshiping was worth the risk. At this time, saints, we're going to have a 100th week video presentation. And before it comes on, I want to thank God for evangelist Crystal Amanchukwu and brother Gary Leach for putting this together. Come on, let's appreciate our own. After the video presentation, we will have the necrology by evangelist Margaret Hamilton. We will then be greeted by the fragrance of the house, our very own First Lady Pamela Wooden. Then there will be a special presentation to the mothers. Then we will be celebrating with a hundred week presentation from the food bank, the upper room riders, the happy warriors, and love life. And then we will have the presentation of our leader and he will come and also share the ASA tribute. Please receive them in this order. It was on March the 3rd, 2020, when the first case of COVID was reported in North Carolina. Little did we know the effects that this report would have on people and especially the church. It was March 14th. Governor Cooper issued the executive order that prohibited any gathering for a hundred people or more. Churches begin to close their doors. And in the words of our Bishop, they've all folded like cheap tents. By the 16th of March, gatherings were reduced to only 50 people. It was on March 21st, however, when the police came to the church during one of our call meetings, they received an anonymous call from New York and they told them that we are still having church at the upper room. It wasn't soon after that where the police were coming to the upper room parking lots and begin to count the spaces and preparing a raid against the upper room. On Thursday, March 26th, 2020, in response to the news that Bishop received concerning the conversation of upper room still holding in-person services, the decision was made to hold live stream Bible study from his office. In Acts 19 and 29, Paul was warned not to go into the theater. Bishop was warned and God confirmed that it was time to shut down. Uh, I am announcing to you today, uh, that as of today, we're going to make adjustments that we've had in place, that, uh, uh, that Gary and I have talked about, that we've had in place and ready to roll with for uh, weeks now. There was no way that Bishop Wooden was going to sit behind a computer screen in a t-shirt 
and a bathrobe to give the word to the people. So we created a plan and put it into action. We put together a praise team. We had our band and a sound team. Brother Gary was here. We had security, our media team, and we utilized those that were deemed essential on the program. We had church the best way that we could. Church is closing and people are boasting and bragging because they closed their church. And this is the new norm. But you know what? Not at the upper room. Thank God for a man of God who stood on the wall even then and said, this is the never to be norm. He said it then, he's saying it now. I 100% agree with him. So our job became easy because you know what? All of this stuff that was encapsulated in this whole COVID pandemic, we kind of just charge it off as a, this is not gonna last. For the words of Timothy Wright, I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. So we sing with joy, we sing with happiness. We're glad to see each other, we embrace each other. But here's one thing we knew and we never forgot, it will not always be this way. God is going, when the time is right, fill it up. God will put the people back. God will God will heal the land. During COVID-19, our church experienced an Asa blessing. It can only be described as the good hand of the Lord upon our ministry. Bishop Wooden said, there is a market for God's truth. Individuals all across the country, all across the union and in other states begin to find our ministry through the various social media channels, television and radio. So it helped us in a tremendous way to continue to be a blessing to our seniors, to continue to feed the hungry. In fact, our giving of food doubled in our area. We were also able to continue to support moms who wanted to keep their babies. And we were also able to bless the house of God through renovations and through revitalizing this entire area. God blessed us with an Asa blessing. So during the seven week shutdown, I think it's notable to mention that Bishop and First Lady Wooden was very generous with the staff for we did not lose our jobs. And actually during that time, during this two year period, we have actually received raises. And I didn't say raise, I said we have received raises during this time. So they have really been a blessing to us. And I believe that because we followed the leadership of our bishop, the Lord has come in and blessed us tremendously. So we are very grateful for their leadership and their generosity during this shutdown period. After receiving several extensions to the shutdown, we found ways to continue to do ministry. First Lady Pamela Wooden, the fragrance of the ministry, kept the women together through a noonday prayer conference call and Zoom Bible study. The men's department president continued their fourth Tuesday morning prayer calls and Bible study. We had Sunday school through a conference call and we hosted a Zoom Bible study for our youth. After experiencing the school shutdown and being disconnected from everyone, it was good that our church had the Zoom Youth Bible Study. This was a way that we were able to see everyone and the youth pastor was helping us get through this time by giving us a word from the Lord. I was also able to come to the services during the seven weeks. I am so glad to be a part of a church where they took worship seriously. On Thursday, March 23rd, 2020, the women gathered to pray for Women's Weekend. When I arrived, the pastor informed me that we were going to have to suspend our services. I told him that the women had gathered for noonday prayer and asked what should we do. He said, go on with it and at the conclusion, inform them of my decision, but tell them this is the never to be normal. We will be back soon. After informing them, the women were distraught to say the least. We sat there for another 30 minutes, venting our frustration, encouraging one another. And Sister Christy Parker asked, is there any way we can just continue to have prayer? And I remember Sister Emil Hope saying, I work with COVID patients every day. This prayer is my lifeline. <laughs>
From there, we began having a weekly noonday prayer call. We prayed 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, asking God to heal the land. And week after week, we fervently prayed a Psalm 91 blessing for the saints, recognizing that the Lord is our refuge and in Him do we put our trust. Verses 9 through 11 say, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, that shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Oh, we must admit what the Lord has done here at the upper room is extraordinary. It is simply amazing. The Lord has hid us in his secret place, and for that we give him all the glory. After a year, as times seemed to be getting better, I asked the pastor if we should end the weekly prayer. And he said, I don't sense that it is time to stop praying now because we have no idea how much prayer has sustained us during these times. So the women continue to pray and we have been praying ever since. While going through all of these transitions, God gave our executive administrator a plan. She believed the saints were going to re-enter the sanctuary sooner than later. The plan was interesting because I wasn't sitting around thinking about, oh my goodness, we've got to have a plan to come back into the sanctuary. I kept hearing in my spirit, Bishop saying, this is the new never to be called normal. We're coming back. I kept hearing that in my spirit. And one day, that Wednesday, I believe it was April 1st, the Lord said, sit down and write this out. And I just began to see the entire church, the sanctuary, the media suite, the band pit, the multipurpose room, the fellowship hall. I could see everything just as clear. And the Lord began to give me strategies for the social distancing and everything that needed to take place when we came back. I just believed that Bishop wasn't just a man taking a walk. I didn't believe that he was just saying, we're coming back. I believe that the Lord was saying to him, and it didn't make sense because why would the Lord want us out of church? So when he gave it to me, I wrote it down that Friday after I wrote it down on that Wednesday, I handed it to Bishop. He was going home for the weekend, gave it to him in a blue folder, and he said, thank you. And I didn't hear any more about it until that day that he called, Saturday, May 16th and we put the plan into action. I called my staff, we had a conference call. We met here at the church. I called Tim Jones, the head usher. He began to tape the sanctuary. Uh, it was quite phenomenal. The Lord just anointed us to do it in several hours that night. And we walked into the sanctuary on May 17th. On Saturday, May 16th, 2020, Judge James C. Dever temporarily overturned Governor Roy Cooper's orders that restricted churches from gathering. Bishop made the call to return the next day. The plan was executed. May 17th, we re-entered the sanctuary for all congregants. I've been telling you that we're coming back. I've been taped texting people who text me and they said, Bishop, we, we miss the church. We miss being in service. We want to be back in the church. And I would text them and say, soon and very soon. Let's give praises to the God of the Bible. Praise the Lord. Let him hear you. Let him hear you. Let him hear you. We're in church. We don't apologize for it. We're glad. Everybody who's glad to be in the house of God, let me hear you just give God a I'm glad praise. What a blessing it was to be able to come back into the house of the Lord. Um, being separated for seven weeks was a very arduous uh, task and feeling. Um, but I'm grateful to God that we had a man of God who was courageous enough to go against the culture and the tide and to open up the church for the saints of God to come together. Um, I'm grateful uh, for the medium by which we were able to uh, hear the word of God during those seven weeks, but there's nothing like being live in the service and to be amongst the saints of God and to have fellowship with the saints of God. So here we sit a hundred weeks later, blessed and kept by the power of God. And for that, we're grateful. When I received that call that my church was closed because of the pandemic, 
It felt to me like I had been sentenced to prison for a crime that I had not committed. Into solitude, high bail. But one day, they called and told me that my church was reopened. And it was like someone had paid my bail and I was set free to be back home with my family, my bishop, to God be the glory. Just to hear him say, God first, welcome home. When we returned, Bishop wanted to make sure that all of the necessary protocols were in place. The sanitation station, the temperature check stations, and people had the choice to wear masks if they choose to. Brother Tim Jones, our head usher, he worked faithfully in assuring that all of the seats were marked for six feet social distancing. He, and along with the entire usher board and the greeters, they entirely worked to make sure that the people felt safe when they entered into the church. The number of the saints that returned was unbelievable. You should have seen it. The mothers coming in, everyone wanted to come back to church, but it created a problem, a spacing problem for us. Bishop Wooden, however, was presented with a solution of having two services on Sunday by the ministry team, the operation team and leaders on August the 9th of 2020. The two services with one message all began. This allowed for many of the saints to be able to join us here in the sanctuary. Now it's important to note COVID's in the world and people got COVID, but they were not afraid to return to the house of God where worshiping was worth the risk. When the church reopened and the decision to have two services was made, traffic flow was a concern. I was asked to provide a traffic plan to accommodate the anticipated traffic conditions. This plan streamlined the ingress and egress of traffic to less than 15 minutes, allowing maximum time for church staff to perform the necessary tasks to prepare for the second service. I consider it an honor to be able to contribute to the overall success of us reaching 100 weeks. On May 9th, 2021, we celebrated 52 weeks in live services. Bishop Wooden pronounced the ace of blessing from 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him. Asa ruled for 41 years, and 35 years of that reign were almost totally peaceful. God was with him and blessed him and protected him and prospered him in wonderful ways because he trusted and sought the Lord. And over the time frame of this pandemic, God has been with the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. We've come this far by faith trusting and leaning on the Lord, and he has not failed us at all. Throughout this pandemic, we were able to have our pastor's anniversary service. The Philippians offerings were increased, and our pandemic pastor, through the help of the Lord, led us 100 weeks strong. For the upcoming anniversary on September 18th, the theme will be Ebenezer from 1 Samuel 7 and 12. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mizpah and Shin, and he named it Ebenezer, saying, thus far the Lord has helped us. God gave us a plan, and with the help of so many great warriors, God has blessed our plans, and today we celebrate 100 weeks. It takes courage to live holy. It takes courage to carry on.
like to take this opportunity to commemorate the memory of the precious members whom we have lost to COVID-19 related complications during these 100 weeks. The Bible says in Psalm 116 verse 15, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. During these 100 weeks, we lost three beloved members, Brother Carlton Coleman, Sister Sean Woods, and Brother Marvin Dancy, our long distance member of Charleston, South Carolina. We had the opportunity to speak with their loved ones about the 100th week and any thoughts they wanted to share about them. This is what they had to say. Sister Angela Coleman, the wife of the late Brother Carlton Coleman said, I can say that I feel blessed to be a member of this great church, the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Am I surprised that we have come to this great time and place since the attempt to close the church by politicians? The answer is absolutely not. Personally, not knowing the trial that was to come into my life, if it had not been for the ability to attend church, I can undeniably say that I don't know how I would have made it, but God. Speaking for my husband, Oh my, would he be excited. He would of course brag to everyone, family, friends, and coworkers about the 100th week as he did about everything the church did. Carlton was a special person. He would do anything for anyone. He loved God, his church, his pastor, and would defend his church to anyone. Miss him? I can't describe how much. But I still rejoice knowing he is with Jesus talking his ear off. <laughs> Brother, Brother Sean Woods, the husband of the late sister Sean Woods said this, week 100 is yet another sign of God's sovereignty and Bishop Wooden's obedience to God's will and his way. The God of the Bible is a keeper and a healer and he has used the upper room as a living example that he is still in the blessing business. A mask can only provide temporary protection at best. God's protection is eternal. Sean was a wonderful wife, mother, and friend. It was an honor to call Sean my wife for 24 years and to have known and loved her for 30 years. She has left an impact and legacy that I see on our daughters every day. While I deeply miss her daily, I know that she is in a better place and I believe that I will see her again. Sister Jennifer Dancy, the wife of the late brother Marvin Dancy said, as it relates to the 100th week celebration, I am very pleased. Bishop and First Lady are blessed to have made it to 100 weeks. God is good to him and First Lady. Speaking for Marvin, he would say the same thing. What I would say about my husband is that I love my husband, like Bishop loves First Lady Wooden and Joni Lamb loves Marcus Lamb. We would also like to acknowledge the families of all the members of Upper Room and those watching who have lost loved ones. We are praying for you and we acknowledge your loss. Thank you. Well, clap your hands for the Lord Jesus and give God an amazing praise. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord on this 100th week back in, in live service. God is good, isn't he? What a blessing it is. And I tell you, it is certainly good to see you, the eight o'clockers on this morning. God bless every one of you. We do give praise, glory, and honor to the God of our salvation. And I tell you what a triumphant day this is. We thank God for how the Lord has certainly blessed us. And we serve the triumphant Lord. Praise God. He conquered death, hell, and the grave that we might have life, that we might live, and we give him 
All the glory and honor for that. We thank God for our great pastor, our leader, our mighty man of God. What a great man of God he is. And we thank God for his vision. And we certainly honor him for his great leadership. Well, I want to um, take this opportunity to give honor and respect to some great and notable people who um, were certainly triumphant during this time. They are uh, mothers of our church who, despite the fact that they were at high risk, uh, despite the fact that um, many of their families uh, wanted them to stay home, they were determined that they would come to the house of God. And our bishop wanted to do something to honor them uh, for their bravery, for their courage, and for their uh, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we want to honor these mothers and let them know uh, that we love them. We appreciate them on behalf of our great pastor and our leader. We appreciate them for their sacrifice. Amen. Our um, certificate says, Upper Room Church of God in Christ, heroine of faith, given to Mother Sandra Neely in recognition of your consistent church attendance and faithfulness throughout the pandemic. Your bravery and determination is an inspiration to us all. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still be, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Psalm 92, 13, and 14. Presented by our beloved pastor and leader, Bishop Patrick Wooden Sr. and a First Lady Wooden. Amen. They all read the same. Our next one goes to the heroine, heroine of faith. Yes, thank God for Mother Neely. God bless you. Our next heroine of faith is Mother Ruby Harris. We have a heron of faith, Mother Teresa Keenan. Hallelujah. And lastly, for our 8 a.m. service, heroine of faith, Mother Annie Barnes. We have another mother, a heroine of faith. God bless you, Mother Eva Crawford. Yes. Yes. Come on, let's stand and celebrate these great heroines of faith. Amen. God bless you. You're certainly an encouragement and an inspiration to us all. They kept me fired up, I tell you that. And we'll honor the others in the uh, 11 o'clock service. Let's give them another great big round of applause. Thank you, women of God, for your faith and your courage. And God didn't let us lose a one of them. Isn't God good? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Because everybody ought to praise the Lord. Amen, amen. We're in 100 weeks celebration. God is good. Amen, amen, amen. On behalf of the food pantry, we thank and praise God for this awesome church, for this awesome pastor, this man of God that has the heart of God for the heart of the people. And we praise and thank God for him for giving us the opportunity to serve. Is there any food pantry volunteers here? Will you please stand up? Amen. 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 
Amen, amen. We thank and praise God that the food pantry is 50 members, members strong. And we have a lot uh, in the 11 o'clock service. God bless you. We thank and praise you. Praise God for each and every one of you. We serve on a daily, daily basis. We thank and praise God that when the pandemic started, we was out there on the field. I think Sister Jinx Bullock and myself was the first two out in Fox Hollow. And we praise and thank God because we was doing lunches. It was for the children, but it ended up being for everybody. <laughs> and from that point on, we started serving, it was about 25 communities that the Upper Room Church was feeding. Everybody was coming to Upper Room for food because there was a shortage on food at that one time. But we thank and praise God, we never said no but we always had, and the Lord always blessed us to have. And we thank and praise God for that. Not, off, not only did we give them food, we offered them salvation. We gave them prayer. Because a lot of people were going through a lot of devastating things at that time, and they wanted prayer. They didn't know what was going on. They didn't know how to deal with it. But I thank and praise God for the prayer warriors that was out on the field, and they are praying, and they are still praying. I thank and praise God that right now, we, we'll cut back a lot, but uh, three times a month, we're giving out mass food in the community. Every first Tuesday, we're in Wendell. Every third Tuesday, we're in Garner. And every second Saturday, we're here. But we're still, every day, giving out food on behalf of the people. But we want to say thank you for what you do, what you give, and how you bless the church. When you bless the church, you bless the people of God. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you for being that voice on the wall. And we don't want you to come down. We are praying much for you. God bless. I reverence the name of Jesus Christ on this Resurrection Sunday because he did just what he said. I'd like to thank the mighty man of God, Bishop Patrick Lane Wooden Sr. for allowing me this space on behalf of the Upper Room Riders celebrating week 100. I recall a sermon that Bishop preached on Easter Sunday of 2020 from St. Luke chapter 22 titled God's Good Man. Can I highlight some of those points for this sermon and God's plan for the mighty men standing with me? Bishop stated, there is a role that the God of the Bible has for every one of us to play. Simply put, it's God's plan. How many know that God's plan will come to pass? In Luke 22, we see God's plan and roles being played out. Can I set the scene for you for one second? Jesus has less than 24 hours before he'll be on the cross. It's the Passover celebration in Jerusalem, and Judas is looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. Peter and John asked, where do you want to eat the Passover? And Jesus, knowing that Judas was listening, told the disciples, when you enter the city, there shall be a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him in the house, and he shall say, the master asked, where is the guest chamber? Where can I eat the Passover? God's plan. Bishop teaches that theologians suggested that Jesus had prior conversation with this man, telling him one day two men will come in the name and ask for the guest chamber. You won't have enough time to get ready. You must be ready. So it's 3 p.m. on Thursday. God's good man had everything prepared for Jesus. His role was micro and gigantic at the same time, but he filled his role in God's kingdom. I know some of you are asking, Brother Williams, what does this have to do with the Upper Room Riders? I'm glad you asked. These mighty men of God standing with our leader who has an ear sealed on God's lip. God told our bishop, worship is worth the risk. But God wanted to fortify him for this huge undertaking. There's pestilence in the land. There's safety for family and the saints. Protests and civil unrest. All the doubters, all the haters, all those who called the police on the church. But it was God's plan. God knew he would form a group of good men 
men who love the Lord, fellowshipping in Jesus Christ through bike rides. The Upper Room Riders purpose in our hearts that we would encourage one another through this pandemic while holding our leader up in prayer. Just like the good man in Luke 22, the Upper Room Riders didn't know when the man of God needed to get away from life's vicissitudes. So you had to be ready. I recall a time, it was late June. The real field temperatures was 114 degrees. Bishop called and said, hey, you guys, we need to go for a bike ride. As we stopped on our 30-mile journey, I told Bishop, he is the only human alive that ever got me on the trail at that time in those temperatures. But looking back on it now, I see God's plan for the upper room riders. It was micro and gigantic at the same time. Pray our strength in the Lord. Amen. We're here, happy warriors and love life. Can we give them a hand, please? Hallelujah. And we're here just to give a few highlights of the last 100 weeks and what the Lord, and to let you know what the Lord has done with the happy warriors and through the work of the happy warriors. First of all, in the last 100 weeks, there was not one week that went by that the happy warriors were not out there at the clinic. Not one week went by that there was not representation. And just like we spoke about the mothers being heroines coming here into the sanctuary, I'm here to tell you that they were well represented at the clinic. Mother Annie Barnes was there. She was there yesterday. But these last 100 weeks, they were well represented. And some of the things that, that the Lord blessed us, blessed our hands to do, because the Bible says that he, he teaches us to war. He teaches our hands to fight and how to war. But we also provided missions. See, on the other side, they try to say that, you know, they don't care about you. They want you to keep your baby, but then they leave you alone. But we're here to tell you that that's not all that we do. We take care, even to this day, we offer support, financial assistance, when they need to go to the doctors, we take them to the doctor's appointments. We supply baby supplies. We do that to this day in the last 100 weeks. This is what the happy warriors have done. Amen. And God has blessed us to bless others. Amen. And some of the other things, there are mothers and fathers who have given their lives to the Lord right there at the clinic. They went to have an abortion but left with the baby and declaring Lord as their Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. And some of the other things that we've done. Hallelujah. Amen. We've been out there. We preach, we pray, and we sing, and we praise. And we've joined in the praises. There were others out there, Catholics out there, other denominations out there. They've learned our songs. They've prayed with us. The Lord has brought us together to pray to him as he does the work behind the scenes. And the last thing that we thank God for in the last 100 weeks, 367 babies have been saved. 367 babies have been saved. Hallelujah. And we give God the glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because just like we said, worship was worth the risk. Saving the lives of the unborn was worth the risk. Hallelujah. We were there. The happy warriors were there. Love life was there. Even those who didn't call themselves happy warriors. But when you're out there praying, when you're out there praising, when you're working with us to save the lives of the unborn, you are a happy warrior. And we want to thank you, Bishop for your leadership in this. Hallelujah. Elder Amanchuku, love life. We want to thank you. Thank you, saints, for your prayers. 367 babies in the last 100 weeks. Hallelujah. Thank you.
Come on and keep those hands clapping. Let's honor the God of the Bible. He has done marvelous things. Hallelujah. Let's thank God. Come on, put your hands together for the great work of the food bank. The upper room riders. Happy warriors and love life. I'm asking that everyone would rest on their feet all over the sanctuary. At the helm of all of this, there is a general, the mighty man of God, of which we all have the privilege of calling our pastor. We all have the privilege of calling him our pastor. Saints and friends all over, put your hands together and receive this giant man in the gospel, our spiritual father, Bishop Patrick Lane Wooden Sr. I got to get myself together. I'm sitting over here crying and carrying on and just rejoicing in the Lord. Happy Easter, everybody. What a resurrection Sunday this is. My God, somebody praise Jesus. Praise Jesus because had he not got up, had he not rose again, had God the Father not raised him from the dead, we wouldn't be here. But because he lives, we are celebrating 100 weeks in live service. Would you give him the biggest praise that you've ever given him in your life? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now, I am messed up. I'm just happy. I'm, I'm thankful. And, and you know what? We're here. And we're alive. And when they said we wouldn't make it, and they said we was crazy, you know what we did? You know what we did, Upper Room? We gave God a chance. The Lord, the Lord spoke to me and said, just tell the people, give me a chance. Give me a chance. There's a lot of things I'll do for you. If you just give me a chance. Just give me a chance. You can be seated. And if you would like to remain standing in worship, you may do that also. Just want to sing just a little bit of this. Glory to God. There's so many things the Lord will do if we give him a chance. Glory to God. Here's what he said to me. Give me a chance to show you that I love you. Give me a chance to show you how strong I am. Give me a chance to show you that I'll save you. I'll do this. If you give me a chance, I'll do all these things. If you give me a chance, that's what he said. Give me a chance to be your friend in the time of trouble. Give me a chance to be your axe on the battlefield. Give me a chance, my word I'll fulfill. I'll do these things. If you give me a chance, I'll do all. All these things, yeah. If you give me a chance, just one more thing. Give me a chance. Show you that I'm a healer. Give me a chance. To cause my face to shine on you. Give me a chance. To bless you and to keep you. I'll do all these things. I'll do all, all these things, yeah. If you give me a chance, come on and take me. Come on and take me at my word. That's what the Lord said. Please take me at my word. I'll do all, all these things, yeah. No matter what.
matter where you are, upper room, he wants us to take him at his word. Take him at his word. Lift your hands and say, I'll take you, Lord, at your word. He wants us to take him, yeah, at his word. He'll do all these things if we give him a chance. I'll heal you. I'll deliver you if you, if you give me a chance. Come on and take him there. Lord, I'm going to take you at your word. The Bible will never fail. Take him at your word. Oh, Lord, I'll do all these things. Stay there, I'll do all these things. Give me a chance. I'll do all these things. Give me a chance. I'll be your bridge over troubled water. Yeah. Give me a chance. I'll be your friend in the time of trouble. Yes, I will. Give me a chance. I'll keep you through COVID-19. Everybody clap your hands. Thank you. If you've ever given him a chance, clap your hands. Bible says, clap your hands. All you people. glad that you gave him a chance how many are glad for the experience that we've shared these 100 weeks how many are glad you're just glad that Jesus got up all at one Sunday morning yeah. oh yes sir I'll do all these things Clap your hands for Jesus. All praises to the God of the Bible. You might be seated in his presence. What a mighty God we serve. I give honor to everybody. I want to call your attention to 2 Chronicles chapter number 16. Amen. We're going to begin reading at the first verse. Praise God. I am so happy. I am so happy. I am so happy. I'm so excited. I'm so appreciative. And, and yet with all this joy, our hearts still remember those who have suffered losses. And um, we, the, the, the necrology that we did, remembering those members, we, we praise the Lord that none of their uh, contacts with COVID were linked to any outbreak at the church. We praise God for that. But these are precious people who are somewhere around the throne saying, carry on in Jesus' name. Amen. And we'll see you guys when, we, when you get here. And maybe we'll take you on a tour to, to, uh, to glory. And uh, maybe we'll walk you down Hallelujah Boulevard. Amen. And then we're praying that God keep their loved ones. And you can tell by their comments that because they stayed in church, and stay connected. See, you didn't hear bitterness or blaming God. 
you know, I was with uh, uh, Joni Lamb out there at Daystar, and she said to me, she says, Bishop, COVID did not kill my husband. So my husband was doing well. She said, my husband's heart stopped. And she said, what did God say to you when my husband, when you heard of his passing? I said, uh, Sister Lamb, I'll, t I'll be honest with you, God spoke to me, and God said it was his time. She said, that's, that's amazing to me. Because friends of ours who are prophets and leaders and seers, people whom we trust from all over the country who are very dear to us, most of them having never met each other and don't know our relationship, called me and said the same thing. God sent a word. And when I shared this with Sister Dancy, our member that we gained online down in South Carolina, wonderful people, they've never... Uh, uh, darken the door of the church, but they are part of our church. They support the ministry and they're members of ours and we were represented at the home going service. And when I shared with her Sister Joni's testimony, Sister Danzy began to rejoice and weep at the same time. She said, I never told anybody, but the day came that my husband's heart just stopped. It was his time. Let me tell you something. When is your time? When is your time? God's going to take you home. When it's my time, the Lord's going to take me home. The only thing I want to be when it's my time, I just want to be ready. Ready. Amen. Ready. In the 6th and 30th year of the reign of Asa, 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 1, in the reign of Asa, Basha, king of Israel came up against Judah and built Ramah. I'm going to show you this. You didn't think you were going to get out today without a map, did you? And he built Ramah, listen to this, to the intent that he might let none go out or come in to Asa, just as you see Putin trying to, how he tried to surround certain strategic areas in Ukraine. That's a battle a strategy. You, you know, you don't just attack your enemy. If, uh, if the enemy is strong, you surround them and you cut them off. Where nothing can get out and nothing can get in. So Basha, the king of Israel, built Ramah. Um, which was just a few miles outside of Jerusalem. And he set this place up so no food or anyone could get out and nothing could come in. All right? And, and he, was, he was being quite successful in his attempt to, to do this. Then Asa, Asa brought out silver and gold out of the treasures of the house of the Lord and of the house and of the king's house and sent them, listen to this, to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria that dwelt at Damascus saying, now listen to this, there is a league between me and thee as there was between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent thee silver and gold. Now listen, this is very important. Go break thy league with Basha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. So this tells you there that when Basha, king of Israel, attacked Judah, the southern kingdom, he attacked them with the help, the blessings, and the assistance of King Ben-Hadad, king of Syria. Just as most people who are paying attention know that the big backer behind Russia is China. It's China. It's amazing how the world repeats itself. And uh, China isn't saying much. But they're the strength behind Russia. As a matter of fact, Putin is making more money now than before the war began. 
Billions are pouring into his coffers. He's got a powerful, silent partner. This is why a country needs strong leadership. Amen. You need somebody strong. You need somebody that can talk. Amen. You need, you need, we need strong leadership. We need to pray because these, these, these nations are led by some strong killers. And, and, it's, just, and it's amazing how they pick this time in the first year of a weak leader to make this move. It's amazing how the Bible, read the Bible. Everything is in the word of God. So a league was formed between Syria and King Ben-Hadad of Syria and Basha, king of Israel. So Asa, when he learns of this attack, goes into the house of God and takes all of the sacred things from God's house and the treasures from his house and sends them to Basha's partner, King Ben-Hadad, and says, hey man, my father and your father in times past were in league together. So I'm, I want to bribe you to break your association with uh, Israel, with Basha, and uh, help me out. Are you following me? So let's read on here. And it says, uh, and uh, uh, verse four, and Ben-Hadad hearkened unto King Asa and sent captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. And they smote a John. I'll show you in just a moment where they were. And Dan and Abel Manum and all the cities of Nephtali, they attack the northern part of Israel. Israel is a busy attacking uh, Judah, which was in the southern part, uh, southern border of Israel. Well, Asa Ben-Hadad turns on Basha and begins to attack Israel from the north. Does that make sense to you? And it came to pass when Basha heard it, when he heard that there was a, an attack on the northern part of his country, that he left off building Ramah and let his work cease. That is, he left off building the city that was put in place to cause a blockade to keep goods and uh, uh, things from going in and out of Judah. Then Asa took all of Judah and they carried away the stones of Ramah and the timber thereof wherewith Basha was building. They took the same timber and the stones that Basha was using to build Ramah to block them and he built therewith Geba and Mizpah. So he took those materials that was left uh, on the border in the city. We have all kinds of materials of the Keystone Pipeline laying out on the ground, collecting rust, where we could have oil going through there that would take our gas prices down. You gotta pay attention to what's going on in the world. All those stones, all of the timber, all of the material that they had brought to Ramah to build a blockade, to starve out the people of God. Basha had to leave it to go up and try to stop the attack because he's been double-crossed by Ben-Hadad, king of Syria. And uh, district missionary, it seemed that the solution worked. And Asa saved the day by turning to Ben-Hadad for help. 
Now you've noticed so far because you're a smart congregation and a smart audience. You've noticed from verse 1 through verse 6, nowhere have I mentioned to you, nowhere have the Bible mentioned to you that King Asa prayed. Or sought God's advice. Now I know you've noticed that because you're Bible, you're Bible students. So he, through his own wit and uh, his own um, uh, ingenuity and the advice that was given to him, he sides with the enemy who was trying to kill him to get that enemy to join him. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. He bribed Ben-Hadad. And by the way, if you study, you'll find that, uh, as you would know, uh, Asa and Ben-Hadad never got along. It was a, you talk about a marriage made in Hades. That was one. So we have to be careful who we turn to for deliverance. Because see, the devil, the devil can deliver you today, but give you misery for the rest of your days. That's right. Go and take that woman's husband. Take that man's wife. You might have a good night the first night, but you may set yourself up for a hellish 20 or 30 years. I thought I'd get a better amen than that. Amen. And so, <laughs> Asa has appeared to have prevailed. Then, you know, as always, the upper room. Not I me, mean King, uh, the prophet Hananiah. <laughs> There's always somebody who's going to show up saying what God said. Wouldn't it be, can't you just leave the Bible out of it sometimes? Can't you just forget Hebrews 10 and 25 at some point? Why keep talking about uh, not forsaking the assemblies of yourself together? You can't, it can't be Jesus, Jesus, Jesus all the time. Man, the thing worked. We don't need to hear from God. Yes, you do. Yes, we do. Look at your neighbor and say, yes, we do. Oh man, don't you know that sometimes you got to separate your politics from your religion? We're not talking about religion right now. We're talking about war. We're talking about global matters. We're talking about one kingdom going up against another kingdom. Ain't nobody talking about salvation. Everything is about God. That's why I'm glad, oh, that he lived. That he got up. I got to preach fast today. You, you, know, you know I can preach this fast. So after the world made their play and made their pitch, all of a sudden, here comes somebody, a Bible thumper, someone, with the word of the law. Can't you just let us be glad? I mean, we, 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 we've strengthened Gabeah. We've built Mitzvah. And if you read this same account in 1 Kings chapter number 15, you find that even the whole area of Benjamin, all of these places were strengthened. And uh, Crystal, I'm going to show it to him in the next service because we move so fast. All these areas, I got, it, I got it on the map. You know, I got it on the map. <laughs> Amen. And I was going I was going to try to show it to you on our to say on this screen right here. See, this is uh, praise the Lord. This is our we, we're renting this one, but we have one that we're buying of our own. Praise the Lord, uh, that's coming. They have to make it twice the size. But see, we're going we still got to keep our cross Amen. and keep the communion table and keep it where. You can tell when you're in here, you're in church. Amen. So uh, we're taking advantage of the new technology, but not changing our soul Amen. and our spirit. Because we can't do that. But technology moves on. And the technology that we have in place now is 20 years old. 
And uh, after a while, they stopped making things. <laughs> Say amen. amen. Let me preach. And so at, at, at that time, Hananiah, the seer, the prophet, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, and everybody celebrate, Asa, 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 you the man. You got us out of this crunch. Praise the Lord, man. Thank God for great leadership. What a mighty king we have. Here comes God's man. And uh, this man walked in. I'm, I'm, I'm reading, I'm read preaching better than you are saying amen. And said unto him, because thou hast relied on the king of Syria and not relied on the Lord thy God. Therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. Woo! That's big right there. That tells you right there that God had a big prize for him. You know what he had for him, Celia? He had a whole country. Matter of fact, he had two countries that he wanted to give him. Two. He wanted to give him Israel and Syria since they teamed up against him. See, some of us are settling uh, for uh, Mizpah and Gabia when God has countries that he wants to give you. See, so many in the body of Christ have settled for far too little. Someone told me that they're on this Easter Sunday, uh, that some saints are going in to that church for the first time since the pandemic. That's wonderful. But we're proof that they could have entered in a hundred weeks ago. You just got to give God a chance. Y'all don't like my preaching today. I'm, I'm getting ready to take off. Amen. And so he said to him, were not the Ethiopians by the way, when the Ethiopians attacked, they attacked with 1,300,000. They came up against Israel. He says, so he, he gives them a history lesson. When the Ethiopians and the Lubims, a huge host, uh, were, were not the Ethiopians and the Lubims, a, a, a huge host with very many chariots and horsemen, Yet, because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thine hands. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein, Thou hast done foolishly. It was foolish to turn to man without praying to me. You see, the, is the word foolishly in your Bible? He said, you acted like a moron. Therefore, from henceforth, thou shalt have wars. I've given you peace, but from now on, you're going to have wars. I want to preach from verse 8, the B clause, and verse 9. Yet because thou didst rely on the Lord when you were going against the Ethiopians and the Lubims, because you, you relied on the Lord, he, de he delivered them into thine hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them, of them whose heart is perfect toward him. I want to preach for a few minutes and then I have some awards I want to give out, some acknowledgments. Because 
we trusted. Because we trusted. Upper Room, we're standing here today celebrating 100 weeks of being back in live services because we trusted. We heard the talk. We heard the criticisms. We listened. We heard. But we're, st we're here today breathing, alive, well, strong, with some mighty experiences underneath our belts that can never be taken away because we trusted. What a mighty God we serve. 365 babies alive because we trusted. All of the people in Southeast Raleigh and in the surrounding areas who were fed during that time because very few, uh, uh, most of the churches were closed and most of the agencies that fed people were closed our workers out there because we trusted. I thank God for the uproom riders. Those men provided a shelter for me and they kept coming back. It would be cold, raining, whatever. God used them to help the, the man of God get away from it all. So you turn on the TV, they got the count, how many are dying. You turn on this channel, they're talking about just wall to wall coverage, but out there on that trail, we had prayer, we had fellowship and we had one another. And God has brought us to where we are today because we took God at his word. On this, the 17th day of April in the year of our Lord 2022, we stand in the sanctuary of our Lord in the upper room, Church of God in Christ, 3300 Idlewood Village Drive. Raleigh, North Carolina, on Resurrection Sunday to celebrate our 100th live in-person worship service. This service it, it not only honors and celebrates the resurrection of our Lord, but it does something else today. It also speaks to the power of that resurrection. See, Jesus didn't just get up. He didn't just get up. This, this is not just a, comm uh, a commemoration of some past event. There are implications. There are things that have happened because he's alive. And one of the things is that we've been able to come back and celebrate 100 weeks because he got up. Amen. It's not just, it's not just some, some uh, static uh, acknowledgement. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is dynamic. By his stripes we are healed. Because he lived, we shall live. There are things attached to the fact that he got up. It is supposed to have an effect on the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we dance, what we put in our bodies, how we communicate. It, there, are, there, there, is, uh, there are implications. There's an effect that the resurrection has. Glory to God. And had Jesus Christ not gotten up, if Jesus Christ was dead, if we were part of a dead religion and a dead church, there is no way we would have come out and there's no way we would be here today. I want to say to God be the glory for the things that he has done. I want to celebrate for a minute or two the power of that resurrection. We're here because he got up. We're saved because he got up. We're sanctified because he got up. Our Lord said this in John's gospel chapter 14, verse 19 through 21. He says, yet a little while and the world see me no more. 
But you see me because I live, you shall live also. And that day shall you know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. How many saw the manifestation of the Lord these last 100 weeks? How many have witnessed God coming in, healing, delivering, setting free? My God, you lost your taste, but God gave you your taste back. You lost your sense of smell, but God gave you your sense of smell back. You got diagnosed with COVID, but God healed your body. Death came all around, but the Lord didn't let it touch you. And then when you saw someone who suffered losses, you were able to go and comfort them. It was the power of the resurrection. Am I right, preacher? None of this would be anything had Jesus not got up. Uh, and uh, uh, he gave us a commandment. I heard him. I heard him. Uh, he said in Hebrews 10, 23 through 25, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Did you hear that? Hold fast. Don't give it up. Don't be so quick to change. Listen, you got to get out of that group thing. You can't be a Christian and walk in group think. Christians don't go, uh, go along to get along. The church has always stuck out like a sore thumb. The church has always been counterculture. The Bible says, and let us hold fast uh, the profession of our faith and, and let us do it without wavering. That is, without giving away, without falling down. Praise the Lord. Without wavering, for he is faithful, that promise. And let us consider, let us think, let us look out, let us think on one another to provoke one another, provoke, to put in motion, to say something that would put some things in motion. Let's say things that would inspire us to move for God. To represent the Lord. If you're in sin, I want to say something to provoke you to get out of it. If you're afraid, I want to say something to provoke you to get out of that fear. Don't let the, the, the media uh, and these people just keep you locked up in fear and locked up in depression and have you where you can't function and everything, if you, you think that every little thing is cancer, every little cough is COVID, everything that's going on, oh, I'm going to die at any time. I want to say something to provoke you, to get you out of that. And I want you to know, I've heard from people all around the world and all over this country who have said, man of God, the word of God that you preach has been provocative and it has caused me to change my mind and in many cases to get on back to living again. My, my, you ought to look at somebody and say, get on back to living again. He said, let us consider one another to provoke one another to love and good works. Somebody said, what is a good work? What's the good work? Verse 25 tells us the good work. And verse 25 says, not forsaken. What's the good work? Not forsaken. Preach, we're not forsaken. The assemblings of ourselves together. Now he admits, as the manner of some is, some have already stopped. He said, but for the rest of us who are considering each other, but exhorting one another. So much the more as you see the day approaching. I see the end coming. I see time winding up. I see signs that Jesus could come back at any day now. So I want to inspire you to lift your hands and praise him. I want to inspire you to make, uh, inspire you to make every day count. I want to encourage you to live for Jesus with everything that you have in you. I want to encourage you to not forsake the assemblings of ourselves together for the church house is not a dangerous house. The church house is not a killer house. People closed churches. It wasn't the churches that were spreading COVID. It was the grocery stores, the box stores, the, the vape stores, all 
all of the places that was open couldn't have been the church because most of the churches was closed. But even if the church had been a spreader, I would rather die with COVID and be in the arms of my Savior than to live here and lose this fire and lose this anointing because I've lived with the anointing and I've lived without the anointing. And trust me, life in the anointing is better than life without the anointing. I want a few anointed people to shout amen. I've tried both. There's nothing like, praise the Lord, walking with power. Being able to cast the devil out. Being able to say of a certainty, if I don't wake up in the morning, everything will be all right. Y'all don't hear me today, see? Uh, uh, not, uh, our resurrected Lord said this. See, when Jesus got up, here's what he said, and I'm taking this home. He said, all power, all exousia. It's a Greek word, exousia, power, all right. All might, all liberty, all permission in heaven and earth is given unto me. Matthew 28 and 18. And then I heard Paul, as he spoke, Paul said in uh, uh, Philippians 3 and 10, the A clause, Paul said that I may know him. Yeah. <laughs> know is to know him exper experientially. To know experientially means to know by experience. Yeah. Not to know because you told me about it. But to know, you know, you remember what happened? The, the, the Samaritan woman, she went and preached. The Bible says she went and preached to the men. Because that lady didn't know anything else. She knew men. She'd had five husbands. She knew men. And she went and preached to the men. And you know what she said to the men? Come see a man. I met a man who told me everything that I ever did and said, this man must be the Christ. And then the men went out and the men heard Jesus. And then the men came back to her and said, now we went out to, he to see him because you told us to. But we want you to know we've experienced him for ourselves. And now we know that he's the Christ. I wonder how many of you have uh, a, a salvation. I'm not talking about pastor salvation. I'm not talking about upper room salvation. I'm not talking about church of God and Christ's salvation. I'm not talking about mama's salvation or daddy's salvation, but you got that kind of salvation from experiencing Jesus yourself. You got Jesus living on the inside and you know you've been born again. Let me see you wave both hands if you know him for yourself. Amen. If you know him like that, you, you can say to yourself, if I don't wake up in the morning, it's all right. You can say to yourself, whatever comes, I'll be all right because I know him. Paul said, I want to know him. And guess what he said? I want to know him and the power. That word power, that is dunamis. That is the ability. That is the, the, the explosive power. That's where we get our word dynamite from. He said, I want to know the power of his resurrection. Well, I want you to know it was the power of the resurrection, resurrected Jesus who got us through this. It was the power, praise the Lord, that raised him from the dead who got us through this. And I'm thankful today for, for being able to stand here. Rocket, let's close this thing to stand here before you in this 100th week you know only God could have done this only the Lord could have made this happen we couldn't have known on March the 27th in 2020 when Governor Cooper gave his edict when the edict came down and effectively shut down the church with the language in section 3 of executive order 121 that said a mass gathering is defined as any event or convening that brings together more than 10 people. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now it cut out of everybody else. So that basically shut down the church. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, that empties the pulpit. That empties the choir stand. That empties the, the, the broadcast room. That empties everybody. So he shut, when he put it down to 10, that's what caused churches to boom, 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 close their doors. And uh, we had no way of knowing that when he shut it down to 10, good God Almighty, and that was on March the 27th and 2020. And we couldn't know that on April the 1st, 
2020 when the Lord visited Sister Patricia and gave her that re-entry plan during that time someone had told me said preacher this is the this I'm afraid that this is going to be the new normal and God said no it's the new never to be called normal tell the folk don't forget Jerusalem I heard Israel when they were carried away to Bab Babylonian captivity they said if we forget thee Jerusalem let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth and let my hand lose its ability to play I said God I won't forget being in the church I won't take it lying down I'm going to fight every day look at what God did he filled us up look around isn't it a good thing didn't it come to pass I, we couldn't know that on May the 16th 2020 when the governor was overturned we couldn't have known that on May the 17th 2020 when we re-entered the sanctuary we couldn't have known by obeying God it would line up that my 60th birthday would fall on week 60 that we've been in the house of God that my 34th pastor anniversary would fall on week 70 and we certainly couldn't know when we obeyed God we certainly couldn't know when we obeyed God we certainly couldn't know that when we obeyed the Lord on May the 17th 2020 that week 100 would fall on Easter Sunday of 2022 on April the 17th and here we are why are we here we're here because God is good we're here because God raised Jesus from the dead we're here because there's power in the name of Jesus ah, we're here because he's alive and well ah, we're here because he is a way maker, a company keeper in a lonely hour. How many know he's a healer? How many know he's an encourager? How many know he's a way maker? How many have experienced God's power? Power to break depression. Power to give you strength to get up in the face of fear. The television, the news, your mama, your daddy, church folk and everybody telling you stay home don't go to church don't listen while you were put fixing your tie you could hear him say you're crazy but you kept on anyhow and now look at us now here we are on week 100 on resurrection Sunday there's one other reason that this is true it's true upper room it's true saints of God it's true because we trusted we took God at his word the Bible said trust in the Lord and do good and verily thou shalt be fed the Bible said commit thy way unto the Lord trust also in him and he will bring it to pass look at us today the Lord brought it to pass ah, the Lord. I'm so glad I'm so glad I'm so been faithful he's been good he showed up he healed us he picked us up he soothed us he comforted us he showed himself strong somebody say strong 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 Tell somebody, my God is not a weak God. Tell somebody.
God, my God, is not a weak God, but he's a strong God. And he was running, his eye was going everywhere, going from one end of the country to the other. His eyes were going from the north to the south, from the east to the west, trying to find somebody to show himself strong on their behalf. He found you, he found me, he found us, he found others, and were able to stand up and testify and tell the world, our God is a good God. Our God is a good God. He's a mighty God. He's a strong God. Sunday. Thank you that we didn't make the mistake that Asa made. We didn't settle for too little. But the moment the coast was clear, we came back to the house of God. Right then and there. Not knowing, Lord, what would befall us. But all we knew was that we couldn't stay away. And I'm glad, Lord, that we have that kind of salvation. I'm glad that we have an affection for you to that degree. The Bible says, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee. The deer loses his life. The deer gets hit by a car. The deer leaps out in front of an 18-wheeler because it smells the scent of water across the street. And the scent is so strong that he does whatever he has to do to try to get to that water. Oh, God, as the heart, as the deer panteth after the water brooks, so panteth 
our souls after thee. Thank you, Lord, for being found. Thank you, Lord, for having mercy. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Thank you for getting up from the dead. Thank you for being alive and well. And thank you for this observance that we're able to celebrate today, week 100, being back into the house of the Lord. Clap your hands for Jesus and give God the praise. On this Easter Sunday morning, and it's good to see everybody, the altar is open. There's a soul that want to be saved. Jesus loves you. And you want, to, you, you, want, you want to know him and want him like that. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. He's a good God and an everlasting king. We're waiting for you. He will save you. Praise God. God bless you. At this time, there is an acknowledgement that I want to do. Praise the Lord. There have been such acts of heroism and bravery and courage. And the Lord put on my heart, the Lord put on my heart today to give this. And he, the, the, the award that God put, he told, he put on my heart to do a 100th week celebration, Asa tribute and is presented in recognition to your uncommon valor throughout the 100 weeks of our return to live services during the pandemic. April 17th, 2022, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. It was extraordinary to see the heroism, the courage, and the unmatched commitment of Sister Nalene Lake. Sister Lake, where are you? Would you please stand? Where's Sister Lake? There she is. Praise the Lord. Sister Lake, please stand. Yes, you Sister Lake. Yes. Yeah, she's looking around. See, she's that kind of person. She's looking around saying, who me? This woman right here have been here every Sunday, driving all the way from Georgia. She comes up on Saturday and fight for the unborn, comes to church at eight o'clock and goes back to Georgia after sir. I said Georgia, not around the corner, Georgia. I want you to come. I want to present this to you today. several here and we're going to do the rest of them in the 11 a.m. But Sister Lake, would you come up here? Praise the Lord. You have been such a inspiration. Oh my. I'll never forget the day that I met you and you have been such an inspiration, such a joy and uh, we've never met anyone like you. And when this pandemic broke out, I actually assumed that's well that might be it now. She, she uh, come from so far and worked so hard. And this woman of God, instead of slowing down, she picked up the pace. We honor you. We love you. And I pray that this will, uh, just, just a token of our appreciation. Thank you, ma'am. Give her a big hand. A champion for Jesus. In her city, they shut down the abortion clinic. And when she learned about us, she began to travel from that distance to come and to help us fight the good fight of faith. If there's ever been an, an evangelist, if there's ever a champion for Jesus, that's one right there. That's right. I have six others that we're going to do in the 11 o'clock service. 
Amen. Just people who have done some uncommon things. Some of these stories, uh, you, you would be surprised. You would be surprised. Because, see, the world wants you to think that, um, that uh, everybody's against uh, Christ or, or that, that many of us are just doing what we do because we feel forced. No, there are people who just love the law. Just love the Lord and, and are willing to go as to the ends of the earth to carry out the work of the Lord. So, Sister Lake, I pray that God give me your kind of faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us bless the Lord now by the way of giving. I have one minute. I'm 30 minutes over time. So that means that uh, right after service, uh, we'll have to make a, a quick transition. Amen. A quick transition. But were you blessed by the service today? I think we got a whole lot done in a short period of time. Thank you, Elder Anthony Wilson. You did a tremendous job as master of ceremony. Amen. Kept it going so that we could uh, get all the things in that we could uh, wanted to get in and then uh, get you out at a reasonable hour. And if it's the Lord's will, we're going to do the same uh, in just a few minutes when we start the next service. Amen. I love every one of you with the love of the Lord. And I want to invite you, to, brethren, did y'all bring my, folk, my my flyer? Remember I said I want to talk about the, uh, the call, the, our, our workers meeting this church don't know how to close out. Our workers meeting starts Wednesday. And it's going to be something. Amen. And God is, uh, uh, is going to bless us. Amen. Uh, the, 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 um, the theme is dealing with things that God delights in. The Bible says, if the Lord delight in us, he will give us this land. You want to be blessed? You want God to do some things in your life. You want a, a measure of peace and power and anointing. Do those things that delight God. Amen. And the Lord will do things that will bless you. And we're going to talk about these things. If you're ready to give, lift your right hand. Father, we bring our offerings and our gifts to you. We give them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I heard on the news today that despite this uh, inflation, uh, we've never seen it quite this high in years, uh, Americans still spent $20 billion for Easter. And now, the $20 billion on candy, Easter eggs, and outfits. I pray that you didn't forget God. Amen. And your tithe and your offerings. Amen. Upper room, you, you look beautiful. Our friends and visitors, you look beautiful. God bless Pastor James Parker. My man, he stepped out. Amen. Going to preach his service today. What a faithful man of God he is. And a dear friend. A dear uh, friend. Praise the Lord. Somebody's born to say, well, did y'all get together on them suits, the off-white suits? Yeah. I told him in Texas, I said, I'm wearing my all white suit Sunday. And I'm wearing both of them. He said, well, I'm going to get me one. I said, go ahead on. And when he told his wife, and Goldie, she moved right quick, bam. Then he walked in looking like an angel. Listen. Our sixth ministers and workers meeting, and I want to highlight something. We're using... Uh, listen, listen to this um, we're using our own as well to help us of course we're going to hear from our uh, supervisor Mother Beverly Dijonet but also Elder Josiah Evans will be featured where's Elder, where's Elder Evans stand up brother and his uh, topic will be on perspective and brother, what day will you be uh, preaching? Wednesday, Wednesday morning in the day service, he's going to be talking about perspective. Also, another one of our own is evangelist Wanda Thomas. Stand up, Wanda. Wanda, what day will you be preaching? 
Friday morning, Evangelist Thomas, and her topic is knowing and understanding God. That's going to be powerful. Also, Elder Kevin Brody, I don't know if Brody, I know Brody's here, but he may be in the back. Uh, he will be uh, on, do you know what day he's on? Friday. Friday, and his topic will be, uh, oh, he's a morning speaker. So thank God, thank God. And also our own sister missionary, Joyce Lyon, she, she worships now with her, her brother. Uh, she will be on Friday, and uh, uh, we're, we're featuring some powerful people, and uh, I want you to gear up for our sixth uh, annual ministers and workers meeting. So many good things are happening here at the upper room. We can't hardly even keep up with them all. But God is so good. Have ever, has everyone given? Father, we thank you for the gifts. We thank you for the tithe. We thank you for the offerings. We thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, that you rose again. Thank you for being alive and well and seated at the right hand of the Father. But, Lord, we thank you even more that you're in our hearts. Thank you for saving us and putting us, giving us an inheritance among them that are sanctified. And we thank you, Lord, for this milestone of 100 weeks back in live services. And may you continue to keep us and use us for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Give yourselves a big hand. Thank you so much. I pray that you were blessed by the word of the Lord. Amen. And uh, we're, we're, we're going, some of you are going home and some are going out to eat. Uh, and then others of us are, are, are regrouping uh, for the next service. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll uh, and that will be our day. I love you. Thank you for being such a faithful congregation. Did you hear me talking about you on uh, Daystar? Amen. By the time I left there, our message was in the UK, uh, Australia, all over. People, people began to call. I, I talked about the greatest congregation uh, in the world. I talked about you. I thank God for you. Thank God. And I told him, I said, it's not easy to be a member of Upper Room because Upper Room, everybody's t always talking about Upper Room for some reason. I don't know what it is. They call me controversial, but I don't know why. I'm the simplest preacher in Raleigh. All I do is stick with the Bible. Yeah. I'm the most predictable one. All you got to do is know what the Bible says. If you know what the Bible says, you can pretty much figure out where I wouldn't is going to come down on an issue. That's God's way. Amen. And, uh, but sometimes I put you right in the line of fire. I didn't have time today to talk to you about the trans doctor. He's, he's a tranny himself who have stopped doing transgender surgeries because he said they've gone too far. Now he's an expert. Now he said they've gone too far. Sister Lamb told me and, an, and another lady, they haven't aired this yet. We were doing table talk with Joni. The lady said, I'm so grateful. This is beautiful ladies. Says, I'm so grateful that when I was a little girl and I was a tomboy and I was playing boyish games and acting boyish and running and jumping and carrying on like a boy, I was a tomboy. She said, I'm so glad that my parents didn't take me and have a sex change operation. I'm so glad they let me grow out of it. Now, how many ex-tomboys do we have in here? Let me see your hand. Look at, look at all these beautiful ladies. Look, look, look at them. Now, ain't nothing about them, that, these hands that's going on, ain't nothing about y'all that say man. All these tomboys. Aren't you glad that your parents didn't go down there and get you all whacked up, cut up, and all that kind of stuff? You better be glad you weren't born in 2021. May we all stand. I love you with the love of the Lord. Let us continue to pray for each other, lift each other up, consider one another, and provoke one another to love and to good works. Let everybody say, God, God. first.
God bless you.